My name is Melanie Chiponda. I come from um, the Marangi Diamond Fields, the famous Marangi Diamond Fields in Zimbabwe. And I work with a community-based organization called Chiazwa Community Development Trust. It is uh, an organization that was formed by the community of Marangi in 2008 as a result of the devastating impacts of diamond mining on the environment. So we formed uh, with the objectives of protecting our natural environment, protecting the rights of women who were much more negatively affected by the impacts of mining since they lost their land and their livelihoods. And we also um, have the objective of ensuring that the security of tenure for the local communities is protected. So um, in Marange, we have um, 58,000 hectares of land, which, is, which forms the diamond fields. And uh, therefore, people had to be displaced in order to pave way for diamond mining. And also, the mining process itself is, is very devastating to the natural environment. Large tracts of land are cleared so that uh, mining can take place. So the biggest challenge that we have in the Marangi Diamond Fields is the issue of environmental degradation. It is so bad that uh, the former Minister of um, Environment actually said there is no way the government is going to be able to afford the rehabilitation of the Marange Diamond Fields. And the place itself, Marange, is uh, a semi-arid place. We hardly have meaningful rainfall. And um, it is characterized by uh, very low rains, but it is also rich in uh, animal species. And the people there, they do a lot of livestock farming and also farming of small grains like uh, sorghum, millet. And we have the baobab tree. And the baobab tree to the community, it is actually a treasure in the sense that women sell the baobab fruit for a livelihood. Uh, women use the baobab fruit for food. And also it is believed to have medicinal properties. The bark is used for making mats that you can use for sleeping on, for sitting whilst you are relaxing. And this baobab tree is one of the things that the women in Marange are lamenting for because it was destroyed by mining. And um, one of the demands um, by the women in Marange is that we would like our baobab tree back. And why the baobab tree is of a uh, very big concern to the community of Marange is because it takes very long to grow. It takes up to 50 years. Some of the baobab trees in Marange, I was born when they, they were there. And then all in a day, they are all destroyed. So um, the destruction of the forest in Marange, they have left the ground bare. And mining has left women with less access to land. And with some women, they are actually now landless. And considering that in Zimbabwe, uh, around 67% of the Zimbabwean population, they live in rural areas. And the majority of the rural population are women. And the women's main source of livelihood is working on the land, either through doing livestock farming, or cultivation of the small grains. And women constitute around 80% of um, food production in the agricultural sector in Zimbabwe in the form of subsistence farming. Therefore, women's contributions to the household economy are very critical because women are able to send their children to school. Women are, are able to ensure that they have food security Therefore, taking away land from women, it is actually pushing them, forcing them into extreme poverty because that is their livelihoods. And therefore now, 
mining itself is is uh, is something that the community finds very difficult to accept. Why? Because the community is not concerned about the diamonds in Marange. They can't afford the diamonds. They don't mean much to the ordinary woman in the village, but the land means everything because that is, that is where they can be able to earn a living. And now in Zimbabwe now, we have faced this um, devastation by the El Nino, which uh, has affected um, most countries in Southern Africa, Zimbabwe and countries like, like Malawi included. And we have had um, uh, uh, variations in the weather patterns. Uh, I'll give you an example that in Zimbabwe we experienced rainfall between November and then in February the, the rains they start slowing down as we approach winter and harvest the rains are gone and then last year because of the El Nino we experienced uh, a very dry spell we actually experienced a heat wave and the crop the, 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 the little crop that the women had planted, it was all dried because it, it is now, it, it's, it's not there anymore because it, the, the crop did not manage at all because there were just no rains that the government had to declare the 2015-2016 farming season a disaster because it is a disaster. And why are uh, in particular women who are staying in the vicinity of mines were more negatively impacted because there is no ground cover. The mountains, the trees, they, um, they, they hold the soil. They ensure that uh, uh, these dry spells do not hit direct on the, on the, on, on the soil. And Therefore, what happened is the dry spell was hitting direct on the, on, on the crop. The mountains are gone. They've been leveled because of mining. And therefore now, uh, when we have this uh, environmental degradation as a result of mining, it means women are not able to produce anything. And what that does to them now is their food security is compromised. And then in February, where we're expecting the rains to slow down, we had floods. The El Nino uh, 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 caused flooding. And what happened during the, 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 the floods was that because the ground is bare, it swept away all the topsoil into the rivers. And then there was a lot of siltation. There is a lot of siltation of the rivers. And it created also gullies, which are a very big threat to both humans and animals. And also now, because of uh, soil erosion, women have to walk very long distances in search of water for household use and also for, um, for drinking. And what that means is now, the El Nino has further burdened women. It has increased women's household burden. And women, apart from not being able to have meaningful harvest, and in some cases no harvest at all, the El Nino has uh, 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 brought about diseases associated with droughts, like malaria, like diarrhea, and a lot of children have been affected by malaria and diarrhea. And therefore now women have to do more care work, caring for the, for the, for the sick children because of their gender roles. And therefore the time that they could maybe be doing something productive, they have to commit it to doing care work. And also even their own health is compromised because they have more stresses. And because we have a drought, the food, the prices of grain, they have gone up. And what that means is somehow a lot of women need money which they don't have so that they can be able to buy grain 
so that they can be able to survive themselves and, 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 and their families. And why I'm mentioning a lot about women. In Zimbabwe, there is the male as head of household concept. But as much as men are the heads of household, in situations like this, they migrate to urban centers. They migrate to neighboring countries in search of greener pastures. And then women are left to fend for themselves. For them to also migrate, it is very difficult because societal expectations, they expect women to stay behind, take care of the, of the, of the family, take care of the children, do all the household work. And for the women who manage to migrate, they get menial jobs in urban centers. And sometimes they are just supposed to, 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 to do vending, which is regarded as illegal by our government. And what that means is women do the vending. At the same time, they do it in fear of arrest and confiscation of their goods. And where they are supposed to go and work in neighboring countries, they work in conditions that resemble slave servitude because they are paid a very, very basic, basic salaries. And they have to because they need food. And some other women, especially those staying in mining areas, they are forced into transactional sex as a survival strategy. And what that does now to them is it, it compromises their reproductive health, it exposes them to HIV, AIDS, and this is caused because of environmental degradation. Because if the environment was not harmed, if the environment was protected, it means women would be able to live that like what they had been doing for all these past years. They had managed to live within their own environment. They know how to do it. But now the natural environment is destroyed. Their fields have been taken. Their land has been reduced and some are now landless. And now what is it that they are supposed to survive on? They have to do something to survive. And it is that injustice, that environmental degradation, it affects women more. Women are unjustly uh, uh, negatively impacted by the environmental degradation that is caused by mining. And in Zimbabwe, there is a lot of mining. We have 62 minerals, 40 of which are extractable. It is a very mineral rich country. And therefore now, um, we had been working with the women to see how they can build resilience because they have to. Our government is facing a lot of economic challenges and they just cannot afford to provide those safety nets for the women. And therefore we had been working with the women to ensure that they're involved in decisions that affect their, their lives and well-being that they have to be involved, starting from the community level, to voice their concerns, to voice their concerns in terms of their rivers are supposed to be protected. Their environment is supposed to be protected. They need their forests. They need their baobab trees back. And we have also, we are also working with women to redefine their roles that women, when they're in society, they, they are not like snails that move around with their homes, that they're expected to perform the household roles even out there in the society. They are supposed also to be actively involved, to define their, their, their own agenda as women. And therefore, we are also uh, uh, working um, with other organizations uh, to ensure that women are empowered with information because 
we believe information is very crucial for the women to be able to claim their rights. Information is a right which, make, which uh, makes women be able to access those other rights. And therefore, we have uh, created a resource center for women where we have uh, this, um, this uh, place where women can be able to get information, to get information on issues of environmental protection, on their rights, uh, on the various platforms where they can be able to make their voices heard, and also how they can, they can participate in all the different forums. Because one of the challenges that women face is their cultural beliefs, cultural practices that suppress women's voices. There are also religious beliefs that suppresses people's voices. And therefore, we want to ensure that women's voices are, are heard. We have had a lot of challenges because um, in the community, when you talk about, hey, why are women not participating in all these forums? You are regarded as, you know, the savages of, of, of culture, of, of, um, of, of customs, that you want to go against custom and that you are you want to destroy the family unity and the, the 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 family as an institution and we are fighting very hard to change that that uh, misconception that when women are fighting for their space they are not challenging anyone but they are just saying the same rights that men have should also be afforded to women because in our community if you talk about human rights they assume that human rights are men's rights and therefore we are working with women to demystify to say women's rights are just human rights as well women also have a right to live in a clean environment women also have a right to access education because if you look at this whole issue of women's access to education, if we take the example of Marange where I'm working, you realize that the girl child is, is much more affected than the boy in the sense that when before they go to school, where they even have to walk sometimes more than 10 kilometers because some of the schools were destroyed by mining, they have to do some household chores they have to go and fetch water before they go to school. And we are saying, no, the rights of the girl child to access education should be, shouldn't be compromised because the girl has to be burdened by, by, by housework. The girl has to be given a chance. So this is the work that we are doing in the community. And we are also saying to mining companies, hey, you have to, to, to do environmental rehabilitation. You have to do environmental reclamation so that that land can be used again by the communities living there. So um, that is some of, the, some of the work that we are doing and some of the challenges that we are doing. And we are very thankful to Natural Justice, Heinrich Paul Foundation, uh, for the support that they are giving to our community. And I think the German people um, uh, for, for all the support, we are very thankful. And uh, we are saying that women have a struggle. Uh, women's struggle starts from environmental injustice, climate injustice, the issues of climate change. It affects women much more. These are, are, are climate variations they impact women much more because of the expected gender roles that they perform within the household and within their communities. Thank you very much.